It's been an exciting and infuriating wait with Baldo, Baldo, whatever you want to call it, from Naps team, as they just didn't send out any review codes, and that always gets me worrying about how the game's going to perform on the Nintendo Switch. I have my nefarious ways of gaining entry to games, and despite their best efforts not to give us one, well... Look, look where we are right now. We're going to go through the performance of the game. I think that's been my biggest worry. We'll look at the load times. We'll look at the visual style. We'll look at the options the Nintendo Switch version gives you. We'll have a look at the general layout of the game, how it works, and a glimpse of the first dungeon. I won't show you past there because we'll really be moving into spoiler territory, and I have a feeling this is one that most of you have already pre-ordered or you're really interested in playing for yourself. I will give you my initial impressions as well if I like my first three hours with the game or not, and then we'll be badgering away on our full review in the background. It's been 15 years in the making. Was it worth the wait? Let's find out. I can give you a brief glimpse of the story, but I don't want to give too much away. You'll start your adventure by going to speak to your grandpa. He then tells you of a legend. There's a ship that's been wrecked, and it was said to have held an item of huge power. Unfortunately, being a bit of an old duffer, he can't find his way on board. He knows how to get there through a hidden cave, but that's about it. He gets stuck there every time. And, well, off you go. Baldo plays out very much like a Zelda game with some more open world elements. You'll have a quest log, a side quest log, an equipment screen, a map screen, and these quests are tracked on the maps with different coloured icons. Now, maps work in a similar way to Hollow Knight. You have to purchase maps for new areas. You're given the first one free of charge, but the rest will cost you some of the in-game currency. Currency can be earned through selling items, vendors, and you're given an early glimpse, things like digging up coins from underground, finding treasure chests and completing some of the optional areas within dungeons, all of these things will reward the player with some extra coins. As far as in-game options go, well, it's a bit thin on the ground in all honesty. You can change the volume of the music, but you can't change any of the other volumes. Straight away, the music in-game for me was a touch low compared to the sound effects. I would have liked to have cranked that up. Only a minor gripe. But worth noting. There's also no option here for text size, which is a bit of a disappointment, honestly, because the default, even on my large TV, is small for certain aspects. Thankfully though, all of the text boxes are of a good size, and I'm happy with them borrowing the idea of making bold the most key information in those. It certainly saves you if you manage to switch off for a few seconds. The map itself doesn't seem to allow you to zoom in very far, but you can get some idea of how large the world of Baldo is, even just from the areas that aren't shown. It takes quite a while just to walk around the village, and that's just this tiny little segment here. As far as the controls go, you can move around, there's a button to sprint, hallelujah. There's a stamina system here, which will be used later in combat, and there's a dodge roll. There's no jump button, but you can crouch and hide in bushes, which I imagine will be used later for stealth sections. So let's move on to the dungeon areas. There's been a few of these in the first three hours, and the first thing to note is that they are tough, and I'm really happy to say that. They're really tough. They're quite labyrinthian. There's paths that overlap, go over, under. They're really not instantly straightforward, and you might actually find yourself thinking you're stuck for a while until you realize it's not gonna hand it to you on a plate. The usual suspects show up, lighting up a certain number of lights, pushing crates onto pressure pads, and killing rats with skulls. And I like that the game didn't just hand you your sword and set you off. You don't get that until about an hour in. So let's look at the performance then. And I have a feeling that Nap's team were worried about the few stutters that there are, and were really thinking that people were gonna destroy the game because of that. And I honestly don't think they needed to worry. Yes, when you move or transition into an area, you'll notice the frame rate drop down for a few seconds, and then it returns up to a reasonably smooth one. I think there are some inconsistencies in the frame rate that need to be ironed out, but as you can see, for the most part, it runs quite well. What I will say is that it looks absolutely delightful. You'll find real-time shadow maps and the shadow resolutions are actually quite high. There are dynamic lights in some of the dungeons. There's quite a bit of foliage. You'll see things blowing in the breeze. The water looks great. And in those early areas, you'll have your companion following you around you can ask her to stand still for a bit so you can just run off, but if she's following you, she will teleport to you if you manage to lose her. On the whole though, I think it's one of the most beautiful games I've ever seen. The world and environments absolutely pop. With every transition into a building, 
The same goes for the characters you'll meet, and the transitions to the interiors of buildings are very fast indeed. Those load times are quite short. I think there are a few bugs in some of the loading areas, as one between a dungeon and another area took quite a while, but the vast majority so far have been around five seconds. One thing that has stood out to me is the slightly unusual health and death system. It can be a little bit hit or miss when it comes to taking damage, and it's not always apparent how many hearts you've lost. It is shown here in the corner of the screen, but something about the way it's delivered to the player in comparison to something like Zelda, where you could just tell because you had that sound effect playing and Link himself made certain noises to let you know he was low on health. It just felt a tiny bit unfinished here. It's not a huge gripe, as when you die, you simply respawn at the nearest entrance, be it the doorway you came in or the cliff that you just fell off of. So really, I would say that performance doesn't feel like a huge issue and I haven't experienced a single crash in my entire time so far, which is a real win. Yes, the outdoors areas are definitely running at a lower frame rate. The interior is much smoother, but I don't think it's gonna be an issue for most people. The soundtrack is incredible. How many times have you played a game where the tune is so rhythmic that you want to hum along, but after a while it gets quite irritating. Nap's team have walked that fine line perfectly, and it has quite literally been music to my ears. At the risk of sounding like a broken record, many of the elements really will remind you of The Legend of Zelda, and I don't think that's really a bad thing. There must be some negatives, and I'd say, aside from a couple of those anomalous long loading times, I have noticed a couple of texture issues, some of the shadows not drawing correctly. Strangely, they've included an option to toggle depth of field on and off. That's the only graphics option and I'd say the default of having it off was the right choice because again it impacts on performance. Plus it doesn't look very good in all honesty. Another small quirk I noticed was before I even got into the game, the menu screen seems to have a little bit of an input issue. There's a delay on your inputs that can leave you moving in all the wrong directions. I'd say it's running on average 30 FPS, sometimes it drops down a little but indoors it's always maintained and certainly if I'd pre-ordered I wouldn't be thinking my goodness I've just wasted my money. I want to go over my impressions of the game so far from the time I played, just to give you some idea of my early takes. Put it this way, if I purchased a library and I filled it with books all about charm, this game would still have more than I'd have in my library. It is delightful. It puts a huge smile on your face just instantly from the way the aesthetics come together with the audio and soundtrack and those eye-popping visuals. I found that it just made me feel happy. Now, it's not without its flaws, and like I say, there are a couple of clunkier aspects, I would say. Some of the collision seems a tiny bit off. Falling off a cliff and instantly seeing a game over screen just feels a bit odd when you respawn a few meters away, and it feels like some of the UIs and menus need a little bit more work, but then you crawl into an underground cave. The music changes, the lighting shifts, and a huge owl comes and gives you a magical horn. <laughs> You're chasing after chickens. You're helping someone find their missing turnip. This, for me, is why I started playing games. That sense of escapism, that I've entered an entirely new world. And look, I can tell you already, Baldo isn't a perfect game, but my goodness, is it one that I'm gonna enjoy playing. So I think I'll leave it there for my initial impressions. Obviously, let me know down in the comments if there's anything in particular that you wanna know about, and I'll reply to you. I'm excited to carry on, let's just put it that way. So let me know what you think. Do hit the like if you enjoyed the video. Man, I can't believe I just said that. I hate it when people say that. No, I don't. <laughs> I've changed my mind. Thanks to all our patrons who watch our videos and to all of the new subscribers that have brought us up to 196,000. My goodness. For all things Switch, all the time, keep it Switch up. Cheers, guys. See ya.